now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world. He's a rice news analyst, Emmanuel Efene. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, my friends. Hey, Malaba. <laughs> friends. <laughs> so, you know, time for Malabi to catch you. Yes. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Efene. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Good, good, good morning, Rufai. Good morning. Tundu always looking stunning, no matter how you step out of the house. So kind, <laughs> Mr. Efene. Thank you. <laughs> now, let's go to the newspapers. And we are starting with this day. Nigeria's newspaper of records for a reason. Now, the lead story. Hunter is hunted. Presidential panel investigates Mago. PDP asks EFCC boss to step aside. Now, most of the newspapers here have this story as their lead. Now, let's just look at how they are reporting it before we come back to this day, because this day has a special package there, I will tell you. New Telegraph, EFCC chair, Magu, quizzed over missing recovered loot. Malamis letter trigger probe, Justice Alami heads panel. DSS, we didn't arrest him. EFCC, he responded to a summon. PDP invit invitation confirms Marfessens in anti graft agency. Well, that's quite hasty if you ask me. Now, the Vanguard newspaper, EFCC's Mago, DSS in arrest, interrogation, drama. Mago blocked in traffic, giving invitation to appear before panel. We didn't arrest him, DSS. Panel greets Mago at presidential villa over alleged infractions. While the Daily Sun, EFCC chair in eye of the storm. Faces presidential panel probing allegations against him. Security bars journalists from panel sitting venue. He was never arrested. Eight, DSS. Now, the Daily Trust. Salami's panel quizzes Magu may recommend sack. How DSS picked EFCC chair. He was invited, not arrested, presidency. Malami keeps mum. AGF's memo part of Villa's power play anti-corruption committee. And of course, the Daily Independent graft allegation. Ibrahim Magu battles for survivor. Presidential panel Chris grills in. Confusion, intrigue, trail arrest. GSS blocked journalists from venue of grilling. Magu's ordeal show we are in deep mess. Of course, the nation newspaper EFCC Chair Magu detained. Yes, that's how he puts it. Anti-graft agency boss squeezed over AGF's allegations may be suspended. Malamis power block wants him out, says PACAC. Now, if we come back to this day, Robin, Tundu, and uh, Rufai, the account of this day, well, first, to put it in context, um, it was this day that reported exclusively on June 19th the memo from Malami, the Attorney General of the Federation, in which he queried and raised certain allegations against Magu. And I remember in that report, this day said, it's not likely that President Muhammad Ubar will just yank him off is likely to set up an investigation panel, and here we are with that investigation. But if you look at what they are investigating, of course, the allegations from um, the memo says uh, Magu, that he had asked Magu to account for gaps or discrepancies of figures concerning recovered assets, claiming that Magu was not transparent enough in the management of the recovered assets. Of course, he anchored his recommendations for the removal on grounds ranging from diversion of recovered loot to insubordination and misconduct. Yes, they talk about discrepancy in the figure, but what? let's look at the nature of this discrepancy. Was it underpayment or overpayment? In this case, the figure shows something like overpayment. 
Yes. Yes, because EFCC boss, uh, okay, yes, Malami accused EFC boss of disclosing a total na a Naira recovery of 504 billion, but lodged 543 billion in recovery account with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Incidentally, this exceeded the disclosed figure. I don't know whether this should be an offense that you paid more than you disclosed. I don't get that either. <laughs> Shouldn't he be getting plaudits? Yes, but I don't get it. The Presidential uh, Advisory Committee on Anti-Corruption, headed by uh, the respected Professor Professor Ishe Sage, who usually shoot from the hips, if you like, he has said this is clearly a power play with amongst power blocks in the presidency. And he made certain statements concerning Malami, and he said, to the best of PAC's, uh, PACA's knowledge and observation, Malami has not manifested any genuine commitment to the anti-corruption fight. That is a presidential committee making that statement. So if you put all this together, well, we are in for a long haul. But was Malami, was uh, Magu arrested or detained? Well, if you use the EFCC standard, what EFCC does is that you are invited and a press statement is issued that you have been invited. And the following day, bam, Mr. A arrested by EFCC. So if we use the same standard for Magu, was he arrested? Was he detained? As at the time of going to the bear, to, to, to the press, according to this day, it was still being grilled. And you know I know something about when this day goes to the bear. It must be some minutes past 12 midnight. So yes. he, he's being grilled from Monday into Tuesday. I read a report that he was questioned for six hours. Uh -huh. Well, I Tono made the point earlier that it's neither here nor there whether he was arrested or he was invited. And I followed up with a few comments, but I would like to just state two principles and restate some of the things I said earlier when you were not with us. The first principle is he custodiates Ipsos custodians. You know that. Who will guard the guardians? Who will watch the watchers? And what the uh, Wari administration has been able to achieve in this regard is to simply lay down the rule that nobody is above the law. And that even the anti-corruption czar, even the institutions that have been set up to watch other people are also being watched. Mm. And I think that that's a message for everybody that is in this government, that the president is not joking about his war against uh, corruption and that anybody can be invited for interrogation. The second principle, because if you can invite the uh, anti-corruption czar of the country, then, of course, nobody can complain for being invited. The second principle that Nigerians must take note of is that an allegation is not a conviction. On social media yesterday, people were already behaving as if uh, Ibrahim Magu has been convicted. He the, has not been convicted. The same way they behave when EFCC invites you, invites me, or no, anybody. Just a moment. Just a moment. It's not a conviction. And there is nothing wrong in persons being invited to come and clarify certain things, no matter how weighty the allegations may be. The third principle is that is what uh, in, in law they say how the altering pattern. The allegations against uh, 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 Ibrahim Magu was placed by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, who is a supervising minister, right? Now, it's not enough for the uh, minister to just say uh, Magu has committed these infractions. The person who has been accused of those infractions must be given the right to defend himself. And that is what the panel, the Salami panel, is doing to give him the opportunity to defend himself, to respond to the allegations. So I, I go back to the point I made that we must all refrain from trial by media. We must all refrain from jumping to conclusions. We must allow the panel to do its work. And Ibrahim Magu must be given the full opportunity to defend himself. Ooh. Yeah. I agree with you totally. Well, we've got to go, Mr. Fanny. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, so much.